as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought What's going on? It's Trip Young for Real Fans, Real Talk We are back, Super Bowl week is in front of us we got a whole lot of sports to get into, but uh, before we do that, let me introduce my co-host, legend in two games, Eric Sanchez. What's good, my brother? What's really good, man? It's an exciting time. We're approaching the Super Bowl, and unfortunately, there were a lot of bad things with, with COVID, but we were spoiled at a time where we got to see all the sports at one time, baseball, football, basketball. Now football's over. It's no baseball. So basketball's going to have to carry us through the, the tough winter. All right, man. Well, let's get to it. We're going to start with football, though, because it is Super Bowl week. We got Tampa Bay going up against the Kansas City Chiefs in the first ever home Super Bowl game. Uh, we didn't want to give our picks last week. I told you I didn't even know if I was going to be able to make a pick um, because of how torn I am with the, uh, with, the, with the scenario that's going on. But uh, we got to talk about this Super Bowl, man, because – this is this this is going to be an ep epic Super Bowl because we are literally looking at the passing of the guard at the quarterback position with the greatest of all time and Tom Brady. I mean, he may have another year or two left in him. I mean, who knows, Tom Brady? He might try to stick around for even longer than that. But you know, what I'm saying the future is here and it is now, and that is Patrick Mahomes, who is the best quarterback in football maybe even the best player in football right now uh, going into his second Super Bowl back to back uh, as the favorite, slight favorite. Um, but talk to me, man. What, what, what are you expecting to see before we get into our picks? What are you expecting to see in this game? I think it's going to be a very exciting game. As you mentioned, no matter what happens is the passing of the torch. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is the future of the league. Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. Um, I'm expecting it to be a instant classic. The last time these two guys played in the playoffs and went to overtime with the Patriots being able to beat the Chiefs, that's also the only time Patrick Mahomes has ever lost in the playoffs. Um, Andy Reid is exceptional when he gets two weeks to prepare. Uh, that's always been his narrative, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, and then I'm, I'm highly interested to see just the game plans. As you mentioned, Tampa Bay being the first hosting team to ever make the Super Bowl, will it be a distraction for some of their guys? Because they got a lot of guys that are from the state of Florida. So will it be a distraction or will it be a positive that they got to stay home for two weeks and prepare for the game? Um, what, what can Bruce Arians and his staff cook up? Byron Leftwich is a very good offensive coordinator. Does he have some tricks up the sleeves for this game? Eric Bieniemy, who both we both felt was probably the hottest prospect coming in in terms of coordinators to get a head coaching job. He did not get a head coaching job. So does he kind of throw, throw it in the league's face and say, this is what you were missing out on? And, and does he come up with something for that dynamic offense? So there's a lot of things I'm interested to see. Uh, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, and we, we definitely going to get to the Eric uh, Bien-Ami discussion. Uh, you know, I texted you uh, the other day. As soon as, as soon as I seen that last job uh, position get filled, and I said, oh, it's over. He's not going to get one this season. But if you can't get one this season, hey, listen, I, I'll still I'll still take being the, the OC on, on a back-to-back -back Super Bowl champion if you can uh, actually make that happen. As much as we would love to see Eric Bien-Ami in a spot, um, you know, a couple of coaching hires uh, that were mind-boggling, one of them being the Eagles uh, head coaching position, where I'm just like, so I've never even heard of this guy. And he gonna get a job before it hurt me enemy, but it's the Eagles, so I'm not even too too mad at that. You know what? Let 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 them mess it up if they if they want to. Um, but back to the Super Bowl, 
Uh, I think this is this is going to be an offense powered football game on both sides of the ball. Um, I think Tampa Tampa is 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 eleventh right now in defense, um, and I think uh, in in and Kansas City is I think about thirteenth, fourteenth in in the ranking. So, I mean, we're not talking about any of the top defenses, but we are talking about two of the most high powered offenses uh, when you have. All pro wide receivers, tight ends, uh, or, or on both sides. You got some really good running backs, and then you got those those legendary quarterbacks uh, behind center. I think we're gonna see a lot of passing the football, mixed in with some runs. But I, you know, I am looking forward to this. I don't know at this point who who's my pick for for, for MVP. No matter which team wins, just because we could see Kelsey go off for 150 yards and two touchdowns. Same thing with 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 uh with Tyreek Hill. We can see him go off for two hundred yards and a touchdown to two. We can see Mahomes go off for three four hundred yards. We can see Brady go off for four hundred yards. Brady does have the record for most yards in the Super Bowl, and he's home and he's got a lot to prove. And then you got three All Pro wideouts that he can throw to because Antonio Brown will be back and ready to go for the Super Bowl. Uh, so you can you can look forward to seeing him out there. But then when you add in Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, who made a couple of really amazing catches uh it, you know a week and a week ago in order to help get the bucks to the to the super bowl so it, this is just going to be an exciting game i think the fans win the fans absolutely win um you know again the storylines the the level of play from both these teams even though tampa didn't win their division they clearly were one of the best teams in all the nfl this year kansas city was outstanding this year they only really lost one game the last game of the season to me don't count because they didn't play their starters but other than that, they, they had only lost one game. And then, you know, again, the, the Brady Mahomes factor, and you're right. It, whoever wins, the quarterback is probably going to be the favorite to win MVP. Outside of that, it would take um, just a historical performance by somebody, whether it's one of the running backs having a great day, whether it's one of the receivers breaking some sort of record. But more than likely, it's going to be the quarterback because both these teams are going to look to air it out. Yeah. Tampa Bay, as you mentioned, is a good defense, but their real strength is against the running game. Kansas City could care less about running the ball more than a couple of times, right? <laughs> Kansas City, Kansas City may run the ball 10 to 12 times the whole the whole night. Yeah. So the the Bucks ability to stop the run means nothing to Kansas City at all. They they're looking to air it out no matter what. And vice versa. Brady's gonna have all his weapons fully healthy. Mm -hmm. The two weeks I think are, the, are gonna serve great for Gronkowski. I think Gronk is the X factor for Tampa in this game. He's Brady's most trusted weapon. He's the guy he's gone to war with so many times. And with 60 minutes in front of them to go to to win a Super Bowl, Brady's going to trust Gronk more than he trusts any other receiver or weapon on the field that day. Yes, and 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 they went back to the the legendary uh, uh, IG video <laughs> playing the bad boys for like <laughs> they're they're excited. I'm extremely excited to see this. The the boys are back in town, man. Uh, Brady and Gronk back together for another Super Bowl in another location. Um, have we have we put to bed? The question of, I guess, who was more important or who had the bigger role in that in the whole New England Tom Brady versus Bill Belichick? No, I don't think we put it to bed. I think short term Brady has won the debate um, because obviously he's in the Super Bowl and Bill Belichick didn't even make the playoffs. But we can't discount or discredit the times that Belichick's scheme was able to help them win a game. And it, it showed up early in Tom Brady's career. You know, when they beat the Rams the first time, that was Belichick's defensive game plan to slow down what at that time was the greatest offense they had ever seen, the league had ever seen. And Belichick was it was influential in them beating the Rams the second time where they held the Rams to three points in the Super Bowl. So Belichick has had his moments as well where his game plan is what won the game. If Tampa wins, I think it, it closes the book on it because then it's like, all right, there's not much Belichick can do. But if they lose, and if they lose mainly because Bruce Arians gets out coached then I think the conversation comes back up. But yeah. I think it's ultimately it's a silly conversation. We already knew Brady was the GOAT before the season, yeah, yeah. right? Like this didn't cement Brady as the GOAT. He was already the GOAT before he went to Tampa. And in terms of NFL coaches, I, and because we want to keep it there, Belichick is the greatest NFL head coach ever. So I don't think there was much room for improvement for either one of these guys. Yeah, and, and it's crazy, you know, that we still we still have that discussion because it's like they're both the GOAT. Belichick is the GOAT coach. Brady is the GOAT player. 
You know what I mean? But it, it, it's, it's just a sports thing. We got we to gotta have these kind of debates uh, going back and forth. But either way, it, the spotlight is on Tom Brady right now in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this thing comes down to the why. It may even be one of those p- last possession games. Um, and and, and we, we know that both of these guys are excellent in a two-minute drill. <laughs> so either one of these guys is like, yo, you, you better – I'm, I'm giving a call to the defenses right now because I can't – you're not stopping either one of these offenses, okay? So you better hope at the end you can come up with, with one big play or something like that that can can knock the opponent off because if Patrick Mahomes is healthy, Brady is healthy, the receivers on both sides are healthy, they come to play football, and it's going to be a, a an offensive explosion. So defenses, you better just try something. <laughs> try on, on 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 the chief side you better try to rush uh brady get a little bit of pressure on him on uh, on 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 the buck side you better try to get some pressure to patrick mahomes you better try to keep him off the field as much as possible um so i don't know if that means for tampa that they may have to run the football a little bit more in order to help out uh with with keeping mahomes off the field because that's really the only way to stop mahomes and that offense from scoring is for for mahomes to not be on the field um, so with that being said, though, I guess let, let, let's, let's go into our picks, Eric. I don't know if you made your pick just yet, but I mean, we got it. We got the fans have been waiting for us. They, we, they gave us an extra week to get our thoughts together. Who are you taking? Yeah. So I'm taking Kansas city in a very close game. Um, Tom Brady has made me eat crow the last few weeks though, because I, I didn't think they were going to be able to go to green Bay and win that game. They did. He's get another, he got another opportunity to prove me wrong again. I think it's going to be a very close game. I just, again, as you said, a healthy Patrick Mahomes, healthy weapons. Andy Reid gets two weeks to prepare. And we saw what Tariq Hill did to the secondary when they played in the, in the regular season. Tariq Hill had 200 yards in the first half against yeah. that secondary. So mm-hmm. no disrespect to JPP and Indomitian Sue and, and, and Devin White. They've got a good defense. They have to get to Mahomes consistently. They, it just can't be from time to time. All game, they're going to have to be in the backfield hitting Mahomes because when he releases that ball, every time he throws that ball, we're expecting it to be a big play. And the first time they played, that's all we saw was big plays down the field. Kansas city had a big lead early in the game and kind of just let up the rest of the way. The score was closer than what the game really was because Kansas city jumped out on them very quick. Tampa Bay has got to do a better job in this game. I got Kansas city in a close game. And if I had to predict the score, I'm going to say it's, it's somewhere in a range of uh, 30 to 24, 30 to 27. It's going to be a one score game. I think Kansas city wins. Okay, so now, and I got to tell you, know, once again, the reason I was so torn on this is because you guys know Brady is my favorite quarterback right now. I, 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 you know, Lamar Jackson is my is, is the new cat, you know, coming in. That's going to be my favorite to carry it on. Um, but it's, you know, Brady has been my guy for a long time. So anytime he's in a Super Bowl, unless he's playing against the Giants, I'm going for, for Brady to win. But in this particular situation, um, you know, I, it just... I I cannot, I can't go against the black quarterback just because of how much it means to, to us, you know what I'm saying? For all the years that we were not allowed to play the quarterback position and to see how dominant the, the black quarterbacks are in the NFL right now. So I'm taking Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas city chiefs in this one for the win. I do think it's going to be a one score game because again, I think it's going to be whoever has the football last and um, so that's it. I'm going. This this is my this is this be my first time in a long time picking against Tom Brady in a football game. But I had to do it. And uh, Patrick, don't make me look bad out here. Well, <laughs> well, hey, as as we said, if if they lose this game, Tampa Bay, of course, mm-hmm. it is the ultimate passing of the torch. Yes, it's Brady and Mahomes both on the field, sharing that moment of now it's your league, bro. You know, I I didn't I didn't dominated the league for damn near twenty years. Yeah. Now it's your now it's your time to go ahead, um, you know, and 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 take over, and and we know that's already happening. But the symbolism of it being on the field with both those guys in a close game, and and I think you're right. I think it is going to come down to whoever can make the play late, or who might have the ball late. You know, who who can make the the key play late. But no matter what the score is in the first half, nobody should think that this game is over at any point until it officially strikes over because we've seen both these quarterbacks in Super Bowl situations. We saw it last year with Mahomes in the comeback 
And Brady has done it time and time again in the playoffs with the comebacks. Whoever is losing is not out of this game. Yeah, don't don't get yourself jammed up. Until it says zero 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 on the clock, this game is is definitely not over. Um, but again, once again, however you slice it, it's going to be a great Super Bowl. I'm excited. Um, I got my my TV is ready to go. I got the new joint ready. I got my I got my my fantasy football trophy right in front of the TV right now. I'm excited. I got to figure out where I'm getting my wings from uh, next week, and if I'm doing beer or if what I'm doing as far as my drinks go. Uh, Eric, I don't know how do how do you you know what what foods do you have for your Super Bowl party? Because that's something we got to talk about too. Yeah, wings are a must. Okay. That's it. It starts with wings, and then you kind of figure out where you want to go from there. You know, do you want to keep it purely finger food? Um, because as you mentioned, it's going to be a lot of drinking going on. It's going to be a lot of activity. Even even yes. though during COVID, we aren't throwing Super Bowl parties the way we used to. Yeah, it ain't, ain't going to be like that. But you still got to have the food. <laughs> right. You still going to have the food. It's going to be a lot of getting up. It's going to be a lot of tense moments. You know what I'm saying? You you want to yes. make sure you got the right things there for for halftime. I may actually do. Uh, some wings and tacos this year. Mm, okay. I may do wings and tacos. Uh, definitely got to have a bottle of Bel Air that you're going to pop in, a, in a, the closing moments of the game for whoever the winner is. I got, I got it right there. It's all ready. It's all right. <laughs> and, then, and then you determine, you know, do you want to sip on, you know, some Duce, some Casamigos, you know what I'm saying, some Yak. What, what, what do you want in between there? But I think the, the Bel Air is there just for the moment that the game is over that yeah. we celebrate another successful NFL season. Now, you said tacos. I was actually thinking nachos. So we kind of on the same wavelength, and of course, yeah. of course, the wings. Right. All right. right. So then, listen. So we good. Uh, <laughs> by the time we get back to uh, to recording, I think we'll wait for next week. Let's wait till Monday to record. Um, so that way we can just you know after the game is done and whatnot, we could do something Monday morning that we can do our recap and whatnot. So we won't see you guys until after the Super Bowl again. Um, we're gonna stay with football for a little while. Uh, some you know. It's this a subject which I'm I'm actually very disappointed in a lot of media outlets that I haven't heard mention of this story. Um very disappointed actually that that too not too many media outlets are talking about it. I've seen it, you know, as far as in, in the newspapers and stuff like that, but on television, I haven't I haven't seen too much talk about uh Seahawks lineman Chad Wheeler. Um, and his his arrest for uh, domestic abuse. Um, obviously, you know what I'm saying we still have a have a have a, have a, have a process that we have to go to. But if everything is true, I've seen the pictures, Eric. I know you've seen the pictures. I was completely disgusted uh, by it. Um, and 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 again, we you know we it's something that we spoke about on the podcast. Uh, you know the situation that happened in, in Harlem couple of days ago and it's just like yo we really have to do more to protect our women and our children um because this is this is just unacceptable um to see the way this man beat on that on that woman you know is it, it's, it's really despicable um i i will say this he was released by the seahawks um but again i'm just i'm, I'm very disappointed disgusted and upset that we have not heard more about this in the media. I 1000% I agree with you. Um, I did not see it on ESPN this week at all. Oh. I I did see it on uh, Undisputed. Sh okay. uh, Shannon Sharp and, and Skip did speak on it and had very strong opinions. But you're right. Most uh, media outlets have not discussed it. It's been circulating online. And I'll say this. Um, the pic pictures are very disturbing. I agree with you in, in terms of we've got to allow due process to play out. But if these allegations are true and he beat on this woman the way he did, he's a coward. He's a sucker. He should never play in the NFL again. Um, he, he we put saw, under, the jail. under the jail. We saw how a situation that wasn't even this disturbing and not to say it wasn't bad. Yeah. But in terms of it, when you analyze the pictures of what Ray Rice did in the elevator. Mm hmm. And what was done in this situation, they're not the same. And that's not that's not condoning what Ray Rice did. I'm just saying it just on the level of, of how disturbing these two situations were. Ray Rice never played another down in the NFL. Now, the reason I started off by saying I want to see how due process plays out. And we because we always got to be fair. 
mm-hmm. a couple years ago, there was a woman who tried to accuse Shady McCoy of something similar to this. Yes. And that was not true. Yes. It was found to be that she was not telling the truth in regards to Shady McCoy, that he wanted her put out of his house. She would not obey that. And someone else had removed her from the house and she tried to make it seem like Shady had hit her. And that wasn't true. And a lot of people came down very hard on Shady McCoy for that. And you and I talked about it at the time, like we got to give him an opportunity to see if this is true or not. So the same thing holds for this situation. I'm just going off what I saw in those pictures. And if this is true, I stand by what I said about this man. And you're not even a man. Like I said, you, you, you're the lowest, you're the lowest form or whatever you want to call it on this earth. If you did this to this young woman, you should never be able to play again. And I've heard some people on social media say, look, and this is before he got released, but I think this should hold true anyway. If you're in that locker room, you need to hold him accountable too. And if he ends up getting a job with another team, it ain't all, oh, it's a brotherhood. Nah, ain't none of that, bro. Cause I saw what you did. Yeah. I saw what you did. So you should be alienated and you should have to live with that for the rest of your career and the rest of your life. Cause that shit was I'm part of my language. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's you know, truly disturbing, man. No, you, you, you're absolutely right. Um, and and again, and I and and Eric, I hate that I always, you know, not not always, but I hate that we have to constantly go back to the race issue. And the reason we're going back to the race issue is because this thing has not been highly publicized. You know, now I understand, you know, there was footage in the Ray Rice situation. I understand there was footage in the Kareem Hunt situation, but these two issues were made huge deals everywhere. When that happened with Ray Rice, you could not go anywhere without hearing the talk about Ray Rice and what he did to that woman. Same thing with Kareem Hunt. You could not go anywhere. When Adrian Peterson had the situation with his son, when he, when, when he had beat him with the switch or whatever, you could not go anywhere without hearing about that situation. So why is it that this man is a, is allowed, uh, you know, allegedly to do something like this? And this is not the most talked about thing this week in sports. And, and I would understand it even more if that happened going into this week because of the Super Bowl. I would even understand that a little bit more. But the fact that we've had there's two weeks in between the last game in the Super Bowl, and this happened on the first week. We haven't even really gotten to media week yet. No, but media week Bowl. kicks off tomorrow. Yep, media week kicks exactly. off tomorrow. So the fact that this is not the biggest story in football, I have to – the only thing left for me to say is this has to be because he's white. Well, I'll, I'll say this, and I agree with a lot of things you're saying. In this particular instance, though, I don't think it's because he's white. I think because he was not of the – as high of a profile as those other guys. Ray Rice had already won a Super Bowl and was one at the time was considered one of the best running backs of all of football. Kareem Hunt had just come off of a great rookie season with Kansas City. And Adrian Peterson already had a Hall of Fame career when those things happened. Now, you're right. Those guys did get crucified by the media, right? Even Antonio Brown recently, he didn't lay hands on his, on his child's mother but yeah. because he got into it with her in, in, the, in footage that became public. A huge he got thing. criticized and crucified, right? But I will say this. You same people out there that were holding signs up and protesting because you didn't want Ray Rice to play again or because you didn't want Michael Vick to play back in the NFL again, Peter especially, y'all better be the same ones protesting if Chad Wheeler ever gets a job again. Yeah. Don't I don't want to hear, oh, well, you know, that's that team. No, because when Mike Vick came back to the NFL, there were people who had no affiliation to the Eagles. You weren't even from Philadelphia and you were protesting the fact that he was getting a second chance. Yes. And again, I'm not, I'm I'm not. He wasn't even the one fighting the dogs. He was just at at his house. I'm not condoning what Mike Vick did. We know it's illegal. (laughs) Yeah. But Mike Vick did not harm a human being. Mike Vick was, was a product of just his friends making bad decisions on his property. And he had to take the fall for it. Yep. But the same people that protested for Mike Vick not to ever play again, and he should be banned from the league. I hope y'all keep that same energy when it comes to Chad Wheeler, because Chad Wheeler harmed a human being. Yeah. And he beat her to the point where she was unrecognizable. Yeah. 
he should be held to worse standards than what you've done to other players who have been in similar situations. Yeah, no, listen, man, you, you preaching to the choir right now, brother, <laughs> because it, some some got to give. You know what I'm saying? So I, uh, some definitely has to give. And again, I'm I'm still I'm still sad and disgusted that this hasn't been more of a of a, a big headline in the sports world, especially when you when like it, it gets you emotional when you see them pictures of how that poor woman her face looked. Come on, man, you, you, you three hundred pounds that she was she a buck twenty soaking wet. If there's there's no excuse for that. There's there's nothing you can say to justify beating on a female like that. You know what I'm saying? I clearly you outweigh her by 200 pounds. Easy. So come on, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to hear that. And shame on, on all you media outlets. And, and, and that, and that goes from the top all the way down to the bottom. Like we not even, I'm not even going to put all this onus on ESPNs and the undisputed and, and all of those. I'm saying everybody that goes for all of the major networks on down to you little podcast tv whoever if you have a media outlet and you cover sports and you did not speak about this situation you did not put that man on blast you you, you might as well, you might as well go out with the trash with him that's how i feel about it anybody got a problem a come see me that's a fact that, that's how that's, that's how about it so with that being said we did have a couple of moves going on in the nfl uh, you, you was the first one. I ain't gonna hold you, Eric. Now, because I got you, you was the first one to tell me about the Matt Stafford trade. I didn't believe it at first, but you was absolutely right. He will be heading to the Rams. Jared Goff is on his way to, to, to the Motor City. And um, uh, which was crazy to me is I was surprised that they were able to get uh, two first round picks out of that out of that deal as well. I didn't think I didn't think Matt, Matt Stafford's value was that high. But they had so, to give up golf and two first rounders for him. So what the, the real reason was uh, Jared Goff is highly overpaid as a quarterback, but we know that position demands that, you know, he's already making about $30 million a year. So the Rams had to be able to offload him to be able to take on uh, Stafford. Yes. Um, so they had to get rid of golf some way, somehow. And so the cost of that was the two first round picks. The thing about it though, and, and this is why I don't think is that bad of a deal for the Rams is, so they're giving up a first round pick in next year's draft. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other the other first rounder is actually a pick swap, which is similar to an NBA trade because we never see those in the NFL. Yes. So the, the Rams are actually still keeping a first rounder in 2023. The only thing, thing is that Detroit gets to choose of the higher pick. OK, I don't know if there's any future uh, protections on it or it something. Like that. It's kind of, it was there's one. also a third in there. Yeah. So the the rams i think made the smart move they they feel they have a team that's good enough to win um obviously they were just in the second round of the playoffs and they lost to the packers but they feel that they're good enough to to compete and and go all the way and they've got some good weapons stafford i think is an upgrade you're right to give up as many draft picks is a little like uh I, you know is is i hope this works out for the next 3 years yeah. but when you're this close Again, when you're this close and you were in the second round of playoffs and they were just in the Super Bowl three years ago, they feel like, you know what, we don't want to let this window close. Let's keep it going. And hopefully Stafford stays healthy. Yeah, because, you know, we don't know in three years what, what Aaron Donald is going to be, what Jalen Ramsey is going to be, if that defense is, is going to be the best defense in football. We don't know in three years if they're going to be able to keep that up. So this is a win now situation. You're right. Matthew Stafford is an upgrade. And I was a little like weary on Matthew Stafford. I don't know why, but for some reason, I always feel like he's injured, but he's actually not. He's actually been pretty healthy throughout the course of his career. Like he's pretty, he's played 16 game seasons. I think all except for three of his, of his seasons, he's played a full yeah. 16 game season. Um, now he's never had the defense He's going to have um, now with the Rams, which I think is going to be a huge plus because we're used to him. Stafford puts up nice numbers. Uh, you know, he, he's going to throw for a minimum of 4,500 4, yards. And now, you, you know, the, with the weapons that he's going to have now, you got Cam Akers at running back who's kind of coming to his own in the second half of the season. He'll be back and he's going to get better. And then you got Krupp and those boys. They got, they got a hell of a wide receiver core tight end. Uh, Higby is, is, is really good. So he's got a lot of weapons. And that I think, you know, he's not going to be, it's not going to be a situation where he has to play from behind because that defense is so good. So more times than not, 
he'll actually just be able to play in, in, in low pressure situations. So I love the move uh, for, for the Rams. Detroit, Jared Goff is young enough. He's feasible enough. Um, and you get, you know what I'm saying? You get, you get the pick upgrade. You get another first round draft pick. You get a third round draft pick. Um, they kind of were in, in rebuild mode anyway. It was, it was time to move out of the Stafford era. You know, uh, Calvin Johnson retired a couple of years ago. So, you know, he was, that was a big part of that, that one, two punch, uh, Galladay's contract is up. So we don't know if they're going to be able to, to resign him and bring him back. So you get the extra first round pick, you know, out of the deal, you still, ha- you still get a, a quarterback who is a, a really good starting quarterback. Right. You in still getting a starting caliber guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's not it's not like you're going from that to 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 Stitham. You know what I mean? You're not going from Stafford to 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 Kyle Allen or, or, or somebody like that. So, you know, I think I think both teams can actually come off pretty well from this. Um, but again, I will say this: the Rams, you know, you have to win a Super Bowl sooner rather than later because guys are only gonna get older. You know, Stafford ain't no spring chicken, he's already you know, past he's coming, he's getting ready to start coming down off that, off that prime level. But again, he's in a great situation now because he has such good offensive weapons and a top five defense on, on a team that was just in the Super Bowl uh, two years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think both teams come off uh, pretty good in this one. Um, Aaron Rodgers, do you think he's with the Packers next season or do you think he, he, he tries to get up out of there? So, uh- I was waiting for this moment because it's going to be my bold prediction. I think Aaron Rodgers gets traded. Oh. Um, I, I think there were two things that were very telling about his post-game uh, press conference. One being that he said, you know, going forward on fourth down, that wasn't my call. And then the coach kind of tried to throw it back on him, like, well, Aaron was calling plays all game. So they kind of already internal bickering. But the second thing I saw was there was a reporter who came out and said that after – they were done with the press conference before Aaron Rodgers would get off of the Zoom. He basically said a thank you to all the local media for the way they've treated him and the way they've covered his career with the Packers, which to me signaled, oh, you're out of here then. That was your farewell to everybody who's been a part of that organization or or covered that organization. I think he's on his way out. I think the Packers are going to wait to see what what Watson gets or what the Texans get for Watson, I should say, to kind of use that as the measuring stick because we know Aaron Rodgers, even though he's 37 years old, Aaron Rodgers is still one of the top three or four quarterbacks in all the football. Absolutely. And so I'm sure the Packers are looking at this like, wait a minute, Detroit was able to get two first? And we know we know Deshaun probably going to get about three firsts for the Texans. Yeah. So somewhere in that range is, is Aaron Rodgers' trade value. Um, it'll be interesting, but I think he's out of there. I'd probably say two just because of the age. So I can't like I can't see somebody yeah. getting more, you know what I'm saying? Again, he is he is top three right now. But how many years you're gonna get get out of Aaron Rodgers if you if you trade for him right now? So I can't see a team giving up three first round picks. Two, just because of the level he's still played on the, he's going to be the MVP this season. More than likely. You know what I'm saying? Like I, unless something crazy happens where you know guys lose their minds for a second. He's going to be the MVP this season. So two, I would say yes, is, is feasible. Maybe they might have to throw like a, a, a throw-in player, or some kind of starter or something, wherever he goes. Um, wh- where do you think would be a good landing spot for Aaron Rodgers? Simple. You got it. So, and your point is right. If, if you're giving up three first-round picks, I mean, you are basically saying, all I want is a Super Bowl within the next two years, and I don't yes. care about them first-round picks there are very few teams that are in position to make that type of deal, especially because of his age, but you've got to be a team that's close enough where the rest of your roster is already set and you can afford to give up the first round picks. And the team that jumps out to me the most is the Indianapolis Colts. Mm. If, if you look at the Colts, it was the top 10 defense last year. Jonathan Taylor as a rookie running back was the number three rusher in the league last year. Yes. CY is a little older, but Michael Pittman Jr. is developing into a very solid receiver. And they've got one of the best offensive lines in football. So if I'm the Colts, right, as a Colts fan, I would look at it and say, all right, so at at the very least, I'm getting two really good years out of Aaron Rodgers. Maybe that third year is a little shaky because he'll be 40 at that point. Mm -hmm. But age 38, age 39, he's probably still going to be performing at a high level. 
And if I'm the Colts, I look at it like, look, we have a dome. Weather will not play a factor in any of your home games. We've got a very winnable division because the only other team in the division that's good is Tennessee. The Jaguars are completely rebuilding. The Texans are completely rebuilding. So we can at least guarantee you playoff opportunities the next two years. And if the Colts could win 11 games with Phillip Rivers as their quarterback, what could you do with Aaron Rodgers as your quarterback? The Colts, to me, stand out the most. <laughs> now, I'm not, so I would say the Colts, the only other team that I would really say would be the Saints. Because I do feel like Drew Brees is hanging it up this year. So that's a situation where you go in, you got Kamara, you got Michael Thomas, even though I know they, you know, things have been a little, were a little shaky this season. But I think if, if, if you're going to bring in someone like Aaron Rodgers, I think that would make him very happy um, moving into next season because you don't have to really have a drop at the quarterback position. Um, so I would say one of those two teams. Now, would they, do they want to trade, trade him in the NFC? I don't know. So in that, in that regard, you know, it might be the best thing to send them out to the Colts, but we also could look at maybe uh, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers trade. So if you, in terms of of the saints, and I agree with you, NFC status, if you're the Packers, you're going to be very weary of sending him in the NFC and now, for the next two years, he's playing for Super Bowls while you're still trying to build it up with Jordan Love. Yes. Um, also, I think that the one factor with the Saints that might be tough is if I'm Aaron Rodgers and I've carved out a Hall of Fame career for myself, I don't want to follow in the shadow of Drew Brees. Mm. Right. I don't I don't want it because if it doesn't go right now, you're always compared to that guy who was there before you. Yes. And he had already he already had to deal with that in Green Bay with Brett Favre. You know, it took a while before he was able to overcome that. If I'm the Texans, I don't think I'm trading Watson for um, another quarterback. I'm trading him purely for picks. They're in such a bad space cap-wise. That's a young quarterback. Right. Unless it's, a, unless it's a really young quarterback, they're in such a bad space in terms of cap and picks because they have no first-round pick this year or next year, I don't think. Yeah. Because of the, the, the just the dumb trades they made. Because of the genius they had at, at GM. Right. <laughs> <laughs> who was also the head coach. He wasn't a genius at either one of them spots, but <laughs> they're in such a bad shape, space there. They would prefer to, if they're going to trade for a quarterback, give me a quarterback on his rookie deal. Yes. You and I talked about it. If you're going to give me Daniel Jones and a bunch of picks. All right. I, I'll definitely do that. He's on a rookie deal. And if I want to draft another guy, I can still draft him. Right. But if I'm the Texans, I, <laughs> wow, that's my choice. I, I would like to <laughs> listen. I, I think, and, and I've, I've said it over and over again. I love what Joe Judge is doing with the Giants. And if the Giants, no knock on Daniel Jones, he's still very young. He's still very raw. He makes a lot of mistakes. But he ain't Deshaun Watson. He is nowhere near Deshaun Watson. By and, far. And if you can get a guy like Deshaun Watson at 26 years old with those weapons, the Giants have way better weapons than what the Texans had this past year. Yeah. If, if you get him with Ingram, with Shepard, with Slayton, and if you're able to still keep Saquon, that is an elite level offense from yeah. day one. And and we just saw Joe Judge turn that defense into a top 10 defense. Yeah. So I think the Giants would be great. But in terms of the Texans, you're flipping Deshaun for nothing but picks and young assets that can that you can develop. They're in a terrible spot. You know, they have no draft picks. Yeah, I think I, I don't even think they really have any cap space money. Like after they re-sign guys, yeah. and that's why they they want to get rid of JJ Watt now because they have no cap space either. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it's going to be tough for the Texans. That's why I do, yeah, I do, I do believe if if they if there's a quarterback involved in the trade, it's going to be a young quarterback. Um, you know, that's why I would say I, I I really I really hope that the Giants put some thought into that and say you know what. We'll give you three first rounders because at the end of the day, the highest pick that you're probably going to get out of those three first rounders is going to be this year's number 11 pick. Because once you bring Deshaun Watson to the Giants, they're winning that division. I'm sorry. Like, I'm just like, they, they are the Giants automatically become the best team with the best quarterback by far in that division. No disrespect to, 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 uh, to Dak. I think Dak is really good. Uh, but, he is. He's not Deshaun Watson. He not, he not that. He not that. <laughs> yeah, he's not Deshaun Watson. So if you're the Giants, you better go out there. Y'all hear me? You hear me talking? You hear me? All right. Just making sure they heard me. Because mm -hmm. you better go out there and get, get that man and bring him to to New York 
let him get us right. And shoot, that's somebody that could I could see leading the Giants back to, to the Super Bowl. Oh, without a doubt. I, and I agree with that. And I think that's one of the scariest situations because if the Giants can make that move without having to give up Saquon. Yes. If, if, if I'm Saquon, I'm praying for a quarterback like Deshaun. So that way I don't have to worry about carrying a ball 450 times next year. I've got a quarterback who can, who, who's so great yeah. that you only need me to run the ball maybe 15 to 18 times. Because then at that point, you start using Saquon the way the Saints use Kamara. Like, now we're going to throw you the ball more. We yeah. don't need you running in this line and getting banged yeah. up. Get outside. Hitting you every five yeah. Uh-huh. No, no, get outside and, and let's use your speed and athleticism to beat up on some of these linebackers in space. Yep. You know what I'm saying? If I'm the, if, I agree with you, man. I, I really like what Joe Judge brought there. I've said it all season. I, I love what he brought there, the mindset that he brought there, the attitude that team started playing with. You yeah. have that defense coming back because Logan Ryan already re-signed his deal. Jabril mm-hmm. Peppers is a star in the making. McKinney. Brad, McKinney, Bradbury had a great year. Leonard Williams had a great year. Still got you know, Martinez and right. linebacker in the middle position. That defense is playoff ready. That defense is playoff ready, and they're just waiting for the offense to catch up. And if you could speed up that process a little bit, and like I said, the receivers that are on that team are solid receivers. Is there a game breaker? No. But yeah. I guarantee you Deshaun would take Sterling Shepard over any receiver he had on the Texans this year. Well, that's a fact. Yeah. And then you want you throwing Slayton, you know, Evan Ingram, who is he, he he has to deal with the drops, but at the same time, you know, the right quarterback can help with that a lot. Because if, if you're gonna overthrow me a little. You know what I'm saying? That's for somebody that might be on the fence. It's like, ah. Oh. But if you got Deshaun Watson, who's very accurate, throwing it to them, that's going to make up for, I'd say, like half of those. I'm going to attribute half to Daniel Jones and half to, to Evan Ingram. You know what I'm saying? Because you got you to gotta make plays. You got to make those catches. But if you have a quarterback that's more accurate coming in, I think that that is going to make up for a lot of that. And then once you start really getting that momentum going, I think that'll start to get cut down really fast by by the end of end of next season once they if they if they can do that and they got a little chemistry going on that offense is going to look really good well listen the, the giants went six and ten last year and we could probably name three or four games that they should have won yes so that was a team that easily had an opportunity to go eight and eight nine and seven mm-hmm. um with better quarterback play and, and with just being more consistent overall so deshaun would bring all that if you add if you add deshaun watson so uh, a healthy Giants roster, and they were six and ten this year. I could easily, at a minimum, say re- reverse that, and I ten agree. six easily. I agree. Like maybe, I said, maybe it, even better. It, but it, with, at with, a minimum, with, I would say they could reverse that to ten and six. I agree because, like I said, with this current roster, I think they could have at least went eight and eight, nine and seven. Yeah. So Deshaun is good enough to get you to ten wins with this current roster. Exactly. That's 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 an absolute fact. Um. Let's jump over to the NBA. Still, still a lot going on. I'm still, I'm still letting you have your, have your, your fun with, you know, have your time with the Knicks. I want you to get all that, get all that out, sister. We're not getting out the system because I think we're legit. <laughs> we, we took a tough loss today. We, we, we hung around. We legit. We're a playoff team. We're a playoff team. All right. I, listen, I'm letting you have this one. I'm letting you have this, Eric. I'm not. I have, I haven't gone in on the Knicks all season. I know it's and only I, been listen, a couple of weeks. Listen, but I haven't gone in on the Knicks yet, so I'm letting them did. go. Cause there's nothing to go in on. Like I said, I think when you look at the team, right, there is no like star that pops out to you that says, Oh, this is why it's changed. This is all Thibodeau and this is all coaching. This is why coaching matters in the NBA, because when you have a good enough coach who can come up with a scheme and say, look, this is all we got to do. And we can figure it out. Coming into today's game, we lost a tough one today, but again, we played a really good team. It's it's the Clippers. The Clippers are one of the Clippers are one of they the top up, three. They were up early though. Right. We that. were up early. And you know, in the fourth quarter, they pulled away from us. But today, coming into today, they were first in, in points allowed, first in three-point percentage, third in field goal percentage overall. The defense is legit. That's our calling card. Yes. I think Emmanuel quickly is looking like possibly the steal of the first round. In terms of production, he's he's yes. been he's been better than Obi because Obi hasn't been able to play. Yes. And you know, I, I think what we're doing is legit. Like I said, are, are we are we gonna make noise and beat Philly or Brooklyn? No, I'm not I'm not saying that. But when I say we're legit, I mean we are a playoff team. I think we're good enough and our defense is good enough to be a playoff team. 
If they can get us, if they get a little star power in there, shoot, they might jump up in the. <laughs> in there's, the a, there's a guy in DC that's available out here. There's a guy in DC, but I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping that the Lakers make something. <laughs> there's a guy in DC. I heard he's available. available. Yeah, I, I'm still I'm still hoping he go he 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 wants to go out west and, and see the the bright lights of uh, Hollywood, not what, the bright lights of the big city. What would the Lakers give up though? For a play of that caliber, and for people that don't know who we're talking about, we're talking about Bradley Beal. Yeah, I'm, listen, we're not talking about Russell Westbrook. I don't want people to think we're talking about Russell no. Westbrook. Hell no, because he's available too. Yeah, he's no. available too. Oh, nobody, you keep that man far away. I know he's from he's from LA, but you keep that man far away from LA unless you're sending him to the Clippers. If they want him, they can have him. Don't bring him to run with LeBron. But Bradley Beal, um, I mean, obviously, I mean, the only thing they can really give up it have to be a combination. It have to be Kuzma. Um, Caldwell Pope, Caruso, and and Hort, Horton Tuckin or whatever you know, and that <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Listen, exactly. I'm just out here wishful thinking. Okay, you can't I even just... keep a straight face saying them names. You're right. I couldn't. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, Bradley Bill. We know Bradley Bill is one of the top 20 players in the league. Yes, it's gonna be. It's gonna take a crazy package to get him. Um, I'm, I'm hearing different things. I mean, I'm hearing Golden State is interested. I don't know how it would really work. I'm assuming they would have to give up Wiseman in the deal. That's my thing. But even with Golden State, it's like, why are you bringing in another guard? Um, when Clay, I mean, Clay will be back. It's not like, I don't think Bradley Bill gets them over the hump and gets them back to the finals. Um, yeah. And even, even with Clay, even if you had all three of them together, one, somebody got to, now somebody got to be on the bench. You know what I mean? So I don't know how that would even work out anyway. I, I honestly, I don't really see many places for Bradley Bill, and that's not and that's not to knock his ability on the court. We know oh, he's phenomenal. Just the way the but, team shucked it, right? If you look at the teams that might have a piece for him, right? Like people were saying, "Oh, Philly flips Ben Simmons." Yeah, but I think Ben Simmons has found his role now with Philly. He's okay. he's the third option. He's a really good defensive player, and if I'm Philly, I don't I don't need more offense. I need more defense. I don't, you know, so bringing in Bradley Bill, all right, that sounds great, but like, is that taking shots away from Embiid, who's looking like an MVP caliber player? Yeah. You know, is that taking shots away from Tobias, who looks really good in his new role, and and Doc has figured some things out there? So, I don't know if that works. Denver with Michael Porter Jr., I don't know if they want to give up on that. And even if still, how would Jamal Murray and Bill play in the backcourt together? They're both ball dominant guards who who like to shoot. Neither one of them is a point guard. They're both more scoring guards. Exactly. So I don't think that works. The two teams to me that make the most sense in terms of what they can give up without like gutting their team yeah. would be New Orleans. If New Orleans, because they have so many future picks yes. from the holiday trade and the AD trade, they could throw a bunch of picks at Washington and say, look, here goes Reddick, here goes Lonzo, or here goes Kira Lewis, but I'm not giving you Zion. I'm not giving you Brandon Ingram. And right. now you get, the, you get the new big three of Bill, Ingram, and, and Zion. That, that that looks a little intriguing. <laughs> right. That looks intriguing. And it's not as attractive as the New Orleans pick. But if the Knicks were to say, I'll give you RJ and three first round picks. Yeah. That'd be tough for the Wizards, I think, to turn down because RJ is showing you the development already now. Yes. And then you would get the three picks where it's like, all right, now we just starting fresh. Now, again, the Knicks don't sound as appealing. He would be the star we need. Yeah. But he still doesn't make us a championship team. He just makes us a better playoff team. He yeah. makes us possibly the sixth seed in the East or something. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's it, not enough. Right. It's not enough. You would still have to make another move to elevate yourself into title contention. Yes. But in terms of the other teams, I don't see a, a realistic move. Like, I know Dallas wants him bad. Would they flip Przingis for him? And even so, is that enough? Uh, it wouldn't even be enough for me. if I, I mean, if, if I'm Washington... One, it's not because I don't even know if Pazingas can play a full season. So I can't I can't do that. And then if you're if you're Dallas, you know, and you give up Pazingas, that's a big part of your team right there. So you know what I mean? Like I don't even know if that really makes you better to have Bill and not have Porzingis. You know what I mean? Like I don't know if that right. makes you if that makes the team better. Yeah, and I don't even know again if I'm if I'm Washington, like, is that enough? Because yeah. Dallas doesn't have their first round pick this year. The Knicks own that pick and the Knicks own their pick in 2023. So they don't even really have the draft capital to give up unless they're going to start giving up stuff in 2025. 
Yeah, you know you, what I'm saying? Go later because you can't do back to back years. So you right. about 25, 27. Right. So if you're the whiz, like, do I really want to like, what is that pick even worth at that point? You know, is, is it going to exactly. be a decent pick? Because we know Luke is going to be an all-star for the next 10 to 12 years. Yep. So they don't have the picks to give up. They don't really have the players to give up. So I think they're out of it. Um, Lakers obviously would love them, but the Lakers just don't have the pieces to give up. Yeah. So, and I, that's why I think, I don't know if there's really much of a trade market for them. They, if you look around the league, it's either going to be a team that isn't close enough to winning that has the pieces or a team that maybe is close enough, but they don't have enough pieces to, to intrigue you. Yeah. Really quick while we're talking about the Knicks, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. He has found his way to the end of the end of the bench and he's actually asked for the Knicks to send him down to the G League just so he can get some reps in, get some type of, of playing time. I actually think it's commendable for him to, to request that because at the end of the day, I can't improve my game if I'm not actually on the court. So at least if he goes down to the G League, he can also he can always be called back up, but he can also be auditioning for other teams. So I kind of I, I commend him on it. I agree. I commend him as well. Um, it's hard to, to actually say, let me leave the league and go out to the gym. I don't, yeah, I don't know what happened with Dennis Smith Jr. He was one of my favorite players coming out of the draft five years ago. I wanted us to take him instead of French Frank. Uh, I think either one I, have been good. <laughs> yeah, but I really like Dennis Smith Jr. His rookie year with Dallas was solid, but something happened last season. Because even when we traded for him at the second half of that season, he played well. Yeah, Something happened last season. I don't know if it was the passing of his grandmother when he left the team for a few weeks. But from that point on, he has never seemed to be the same. And at the start of this season, he was out of shape. So yeah. I, I hope he goes down there, he gets his mind right, because he's super talented and super athletic. No, that's a fact. Um, over to Brooklyn, bringing back my man, my man Shump. Now, I don't know what, what hairstyle he's going to have coming to Brooklyn. <laughs> but uh, but they needed some some extra help on the defensive end uh, since they 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 traded away uh, Lavert and Jared Allen and Dimwitty is is still hurt. He's probably going to miss the season. He may be able to come back later in the year, but it's probably a better chance that he won't. So they needed some help on the defensive end. Um, you know, I like Shump. You know what I mean? Like if 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 that's all you're gonna have him out there to do is play some perimeter defense. He's, there's no real pressure. He doesn't have to score. I like it. I think it's a it's a it's a good it's a good pickup. They didn't pay him much, so no, I, it's I, a great pickup. It is. It is. It's a great pickup. It's something they need. Um, another wing defender. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they use the lineups. But he, him, and Dan Tony have a relationship from when Dan Tony was the coach of the Knicks and he was drafted there. Um, him and Kyrie have a relationship because obviously he played in Cleveland with Kyrie. So it is. It is definitely a good pickup for them. Uh, a vet like him who can play some. You know, he, he'll probably give you fifteen to twenty minutes a night. Yes, he probably won't be on the court to close games, but it won't matter because he'll be out there to defend in yeah. key moments so that KD isn't chasing around the best offensive player on the other team all night. Exactly. So, listen, man, I mean, and that's been making some some moves, yo. Yeah, it's, it's one of the first times I've actually given him props for the signing. I, I have to admit that. I, I thought and I thought you would. I think because I'm used to I'm so used to you roasting all of their, their moves, but I figured you would like this one just because. They did trade away a lot of that defense, you know what I mean, and, and Shump can definitely fill somewhat, uh, you know, of that of that void. So I thought you might you might be cool. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the few signings they've made that I was like, yeah, that that makes sense. It makes perfect sense for what they what they need. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, really quick, some MLB news because we're gonna wrap things up in in just a minute. Um, Ken Griffey Jr. was named the senior advisor, uh, to to, to the commissioner, which I love. Um. I know that's that was one of your favorite players uh, growing up, Eric, as well. Um, you know, and I think that he's someone who can connect the dots as far as bringing you know people, the, the younger generations, back into the sport of baseball. I think he's going to be able to help out with a lot of that. Somebody that's very respected, um, and he's one of the greatest to ever play uh, the game of baseball. So. You know, he has that on the field and off the field respect. Um, so I love it, man. Congratulations to, to, to Ken Griffey Jr. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I think he's one of the greatest baseball players of all time. And now with this role, I, I really want to see what his initiative is in terms of getting into the inner cities and getting more young black athletes involved with baseball. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. But he, he's a great ambassador to the game. And uh, congratulations to him for getting this new position. That's a fact. Um, Hall of Fame, 
came and went. Like, ain't nobody going into the Hall of Fame and into the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame uh, this season, which is when was the last time there was nobody going into the Hall? It's been, it's been at least 30 years since this happened. It's crazy. That is crazy that it's been 30 years. <laughs> that is crazy. And then uh, Kurt Schilling, who actually got the most votes uh, this year, but who was also someone that was involved in the, in the steroid uh, era, um, asked to be taken off the list moving forward. Uh, I, I hope that that actually helps Barry uh, get a couple more, <laughs> more votes in. Um, and he can actually make it, but I thought that was crazy that, that he was like, you know what, take me off because he was he was almost there because he was at 71 percent. We needed 75. He he was so. close. His his issue is more, I mean, yes, he he did pitch during the steroid era, but the issue with him has been more about his political beliefs and his radical thoughts. He has been openly supportive of not only the Trump administration, he was openly supportive of running into Capitol Hill. Um and, and he said some wild things online. The Baseball Hall of Fame prides themselves on not only you being a great player, but also being someone who is of good standing, good ethics. So that's why they they not elected him in. But Barry Bonds should be in. And to me, it's, I'm going to say it now before they do the vote next year. It ain't a Baseball Hall of Fame if Barry Bonds ain't in. Yeah, no, that's a that's that's an absolute fact. Um, so we're we going to have to wait on that one and see. Uh, we're about to wrap this thing up. But I do, and I know Eric, I know you, 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 you're you gonna wanna do this as well. We have to say congratulations to Aida Biggs. She went down to South Carolina, South Kakalaka, and uh, got her first pro win in her debut. Um, congratulations, young lady. Uh, we, we are hoping to have you back uh, on the program soon because we, we got to talk about this fight and, and everything else that's going on. So congratulations. Absolutely, congratulations on the first of many. That's a fact. That, that's a that's an absolute fact. And uh, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, but before we do, have to shout out the sponsors. Big shout out to, to Kmart, Petro Home Services, the Rosado Firm, and of course uh, to Soundview Liquors. We appreciate you keeping the bar stocked for us. Uh, make sure you guys are following us on all of our social media. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, Twitter, Instagram at Real Fan Talk. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. And do not worry if you are not in the New York City area and you want to watch on Thursday nights at 8 p.m., just hit that website, Real Fans Real Talk.com, and uh, click the, 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 the view button. And you can watch with everybody in New York City from anywhere you are in the world. And also make sure you guys are following all of our affiliate podcasts, Real Fans, Real Talk, The Sanchez Show, and of course, Shooting the Shit Podcast. You can get them on pretty much all major streaming platforms. Uh, Eric, give us a final thought, man. Final thought, everybody stay safe. We know we know Corona's still going crazy out here. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl, man, and just be safe out here. Chewing on <laughs> for myself, Trip Young, and of course, Legend in Two Games. We are up out of here. Peace. Peace. Yeah, Eric, stay. Let me just do the intro over real quick because I, I press record late. Uh huh. This is real fans, real talk. talk. Real fans, real talk. We as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk. We the illest, of course. Real Real fans, real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie And be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com